first started doing uh, chest compressions on him, and I ran across the hall and just told the building attendant to call 911 secured, and they came up and they rescued me. But I'm trying. I'm, what I'm trying to get at, you know how I feel about my car, Cat Pete, right? But if they had get his helmet on, his head would never have got crushed. Because that's what we heard. It was just like a death, a, a terrible sound. My theory is, wear your helmet all the time, man. Even I'm saying that. You know? <laughs> and it was kind of a scary moment. But if those two carpers weren't there, like, when they got in the grab, I didn't know what to do. I kind of just checked his wrist, his, his shirt, in case he had, like, he was like a diabetic or if he needed an epi. We didn't know the guy. You know, we, you kind of like kind of panic and you don't know what to do, but we all need to take CPR too, man. I'm just, just for your family's sake too, I'm going to sign up for it. The guy lived. I mean, the paramedics came, but the guy was a heavy smoker and a drinker, we found out, but he shouldn't have died. But. How bad were you riding the rest of the day? Hey, man, what was with the blood control? Yeah. He was talking, man. If he had to grab her underneath the sink, or if the the, you know, the kitchen was on the other side, he would have died. Because if you hear a thump, you're always hearing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it was, I was maybe from me to Dwayne. Jimmy Woods was cutting doors, and I heard thump, and I heard Jimmy go like, oh. I saw Jimmy bent over, and I thought he dropped a nine-foot door. And uh, all of a sudden, he turns around, and he's looking, and I see this guy laying right there. Out cold, breathing. He, said, he was breathing to yeah. begin. I don't know, Rick mentioned, you know, you lift his head, do you not, do you, and these are all things that if you're not trained on or, you know, you don't know what to do, and then he stopped breathing, yeah. and that's when Tom and Gabe came in, started CPR, got him breathing again, and uh, just, came just a lot of things, you know, you, you don't know who the guy is, he doesn't, didn't have his, couldn't find his wallet, uh, and go down to the dock, you're on the 44th floor, yeah. you don't know who the guy is. Cell phone service, Rick ran across the four tenant. Um, he just moved things out of the way so the paramedics came. And it was just amazing how loud it was. And Randy heard it. And Randy was probably from here to almost the garage, I would say. Inside of the room. Inside, inside of two rooms. Inside two rooms. And he heard it. It was his head. And did, the other day we were there, didn't you hear the thud? And ask the car, was it you that asked the Yeah, it was, it was electric. 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 So having that happen. Days later, you know, we heard this thud, and all of a sudden I see Randy go, "Hey, you know, the guy goes, yeah, I'm okay." But so you never know. So I never thought a body hit the ground would be that loud. But it was, uh, it, it, it was something. But everybody stepped in, did what they could, prayed for the guy, and did he know, fall off the ladder? Or no. no. Well, he was like, I think what happened was he just came out of, like the kitchen area, and he just had a so massive he heart attack. Pure luck, dude. Like he walked out of the kitchen. Yeah.